Pingu. What a strange, strange show. Pingu was a claymation show on Swiss TV back in the 90s about a family of penguins at the South Pole. You know, just kind of doing their thing, I guess. It gained notoriety back then, partly because of the goofy characters and situations, but also because of the fact that none of the penguins in the show spoke a coherent language. They just communicated with one another through a series of gibberish words and sounds, like nook nook, which was Pingu's classic phrase. It was a pretty family-friendly show, and nothing that would bother anyone for the most part, at least until the episode known as Pingu's Dream came out. The episode was banned following its release for being too disturbing for children. I always wondered why would they make something like that? Well, in order to answer that question, I need to get into the content of what actually happens in the episode. At the beginning, Pingu is sleeping in his little igloo, and the whole structure just lifts off of him out of nowhere. Then his bed grows these long, lanky legs and starts carrying him around the South Pole. That's when a massive, out of proportioned walrus catches a glimpse of him on his bed, exploring the ice. And the walrus is so strange looking. It has a thick mustache, weird dark eyes, and most bizarrely of all, a set of totally human looking teeth. It begins to follow Pingu, hopping out of the water and laughing, toying with him as it blocks him from leaving. He then eats a portion of Pingu's bed and lets out this disturbing laugh, which sounds like the chuckle of a creepy old man. Pingu then runs away, sliding down a cliff and landing in his bed, signifying it was all a dream. The weirdest thing is that it's believed there was actually some real life lore behind the disturbing episode according to various online circles. See, back in the 16th century, there was a European legend about a beast known as the Morse, which was a fearsome walrus-like being that would climb mountainsides and hang from its teeth, awaiting unsuspecting travelers. Some still see the Morse as a Bigfoot-type figure in Scandinavia and claim that it has been responsible for many disappearances. So how does this connect with the episode? Well, it is known that three of the writers from the show Pingu had taken a vacation to Norway before this episode was produced. One of the crew, a writer named Dorian Anderson, apparently left the group during a mountain hiking excursion and was never heard from again. However, it was odd because when the two other writers, Johan Nilsson and Lars Lund, returned back from the trip, Neither of them seemed to want to discuss his disappearance at all, or pursue it any further. It was almost as if they were content with him just vanishing, and that they were ready to move on with the rest of their lives, and that was when the infamous episode was first conceived. Producers of the show and others involved were baffled by it, but the show was always a bit quirky, so they allowed them to move forward with the episode. However, what is not really known about by many is what happened after its release both of the writers disappeared. Considering they had decided to write the episode using pseudonyms, no one really paid much attention while their disappearances were being investigated, but the details were very strange for both of them. With each incident, it seems that they had just been sleeping at home during a bad storm when someone or something came into their house and removed them forcefully from the property. The very strange thing was, though, that in both cases the floor of the house was covered with traces of salt water and neither of them even lived anywhere near the ocean. Also the method of entry was abnormal too. It wasn't like someone had just picked the lock and came in the house. The entire front and side doors were literally torn from the hinges and crushed beside the house. Sadly no one was ever arrested in connection with these cases and they eventually fell into obscurity after a few years. People have been looking into it recently though, and there are some things that were not discovered during the initial investigation. For example, there was an old HTML site up for a while, with a number of peculiar ramblings from Dorian Anderson, about how he was going to attempt to locate an infamous beast from ancient legend. I think that this expedition disturbed something up in those mountains, something that was perhaps asleep for 
countless years. And the others were afraid it would come for them too. This would explain the theme of the giant walrus in the episode following Pingu, for no particular reason. More evidence of what happened was from a journal that Lars used to keep, which was released by one of his relatives online. It detailed their trip up into the highlands and how Dorian started to descend into madness as they made their way up. Apparently one night, as they had nearly approached their final destination, he awoke in their tent in a sweat, even though there was a freezing blizzard going on outside. He began screaming maniacally about how they needed to leave because they had disturbed the Morse, and that it was not going to let them leave. Freaked out and confused, the others tried to reason with him, but Dorian just tore out into the snowstorm and never returned again. With no idea what else to do, the rest of the crew searched for him for the next day or so, but they were completely baffled as to where he would have gone. That was when they also began noticing strange large tracks appearing around their campsite. The hiking party returned back to base camp and alerted authorities to continue the search for Dorian, which as you know was unsuccessful. However, the journal entries didn't end there. There was one more entry the day before Lars and Johan had written the episode. In it, Lars spoke about how he'd been on an evening jog after work that day and had gotten rained out. Apparently as the rain grew stronger, Lars tried to cut through an alley in the city to get back faster. As soon as he did this, he witnessed a massive silhouette approaching him from the other side of the alleyway through the pouring rain. It had an obese, glistening body, which appeared rotten and oily. It would lose pieces of itself, slowly falling apart as it slithered closer and closer to him. He estimated that its size was about as large as an SUV, and described that its head had these four jagged tusks pointed out in different directions. As it closed in, it revealed this deep chasm of a mouth, and released a horrific, wet growl. Lars started to run, but the enormous creature gave chase, gaining on him quickly. It eventually knocked him off his feet, and as he turned back to witness his inevitable death, he noticed that the storm had suddenly moved across the street, and the beast was no longer in sight. That's all that's come out about the details of their disappearances, and since then, the journal and old HTML site have been removed offline. I suppose these entries could have just been the ramblings of a writer experiencing mental decline after the loss of one of his friends. However, I seem to think that there was more to it than that. I believe that the Morse is probably still out there, lurking among those mountaintops, just waiting for someone to challenge it like it has been for hundreds or perhaps thousands of years.